This is our first webinar session um, entitled with Pathways Towards Resilience. And uh, basically we would like to reflect on Nepal's reconstruction and uh, the way forward for the future. Um, as we are moving forward towards uh, uh, constructing resilient homes and communities, um, the mandate of NRA is in the final year, that's in the fifth year. And uh, um, uh, 25th is the uh, five year uh, commemoration of Gorkha earthquake. And uh, we are also going through this uh, global uh, uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19. And uh, here we come with the technology to meet uh, with each other and uh, uh, share and mark this uh, uh, Gorka earthquake uh, anniversary. So basically, let me first introduce myself. I'm Ruplal ID, National Coordination Officer, uh, working in HRRP. And uh, today's uh, uh, highlight uh, in the webinar is basically um, in two folds. Uh, we would like to um, hear from all of our partners and also give some recommendations, suggestions, how we can move forward uh, to, you know, um, uh, uh, to document our best practices and lessons learned uh, when the mandate of NRA is coming in the fifth year. And uh, basically we have uh, uh, our uh, presenters uh, and uh, I would like to, uh, before I introduce our presenters, I have uh, some ground rules, which I would like to uh, tell all of you. The first, okay. the, this webinar will be conducted in English, but uh, please feel free to use your convenient uh, language uh, whenever you want to share your experience or ask questions. Uh, the mic is kept in mute by default, uh, but uh, whenever, you want to take a chance, uh, please uh, raise your hand uh, in by clicking the, the button and uh, or you can uh, drop questions in the chat box at any time um, you feel comfortable. I have colleagues working in the background who will be going through chat box, uh, the important questions that needs to be raised uh, during this floor. And uh, before uh, I introduce our guest speakers, I would like to uh, kindly request all of you to introduce yourself by writing your name and the organization you are representing in the chat box so that we know who is representing from which organization. So when um, our guest speaker starts presenting, you can start writing, I mean, introducing yourself, write your name, and in the bracket, you can write the organization you are re representing. So with this, let me introduce our guest speakers for today. We have uh, Dr. Chandra Badur Swesta, um, the executive committee member uh, in NRA. And uh, we have uh, Manohar Gimire, um, the deputy spokesperson for NRA. So with this brief introduction now, I would like to hand over the mic to Dr. Chandra. Thank uh, you very much, uh, Ruplaji. Uh, yeah. Little, I mean, uh, the technical problem. I would like to uh, increase uh, sound. It is um, quite um, small. Uh, and I would like to minimize this and then do that. It is uh, creating a bit problem. I, um, I think there is a volume box uh, right there in the end of the corner and the, maybe uh, try it with that. Uh, if I can, I, I couldn't minimize this. This is the problem. Oh, uh, to minimize, yeah, there is a, um, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the top uh, right corner, there is exit full screen. And uh, if you click that, it will minimize. Sorry, uh, top right corner? Yes. There is okay. view option, sir, view option. Please click on that view Sorry? option. View options. Yeah, there is also view option. At the top of the screen. screen. Yeah. Okay, now I can do. Okay, good, perfect. 
So then the uh, floor is yeah. yours, Dr. Chandra, so you can start your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, can everybody listen to me, what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, we can. Sir, we can, we can hear you can quite well. Now? Yes. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much. Um, oh. uh, Rupalaji, can you maximize this, um, my presentation? It is okay. on now. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for, I mean, this uh, technical hitches, because this is my first time to be with uh, this webinar. Yes. Thank you, uh, everybody yeah. uh, present Great. in this, in this uh, webinar. Uh, particularly, I would like to thank um, SRRP for this endeavor and um, uh, thank uh, th thank everybody and then uh, i will make presentation of around 12 minutes or so and after that i will hand over to manorji if there is something additional he would, uh, he will um, um, uh, mention include uh, so this is uh, we are we are uh, right now we are um, already 5 years has has gone have gone and uh, uh, during this process, um, what we did, we are trying to look back our uh, activities, our performances, deliveries, and then how can we wrap this up quite professionally is the issue that we are uh, discussing. Next. 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 Uh, so this is what I, I already mentioned that. I mean, uh, this is uh, fifth uh, anniversary. Uh, please go ahead. Next. Okay. Uh, these are uh, uh, this this slide basically tells about how what progress we have made in the private housing sector. There are um, seven hundred eighty-one thousand one hundred seventy-six beneficiaries, and then the central message what I wanted to communicate with this uh, is uh, approximately. I mean, this seventy percent have received third installment. It means. 70% um, um, uh, uh, people have completed their housing construction and then 82% have received second installment means 12% people are, um, um, are, under, um, are under construction and then we are very much hopeful that uh, these 12% uh, 12, uh, 12 people will finish within this OSAR. But this, uh, what will happen with this COVID-19 um, it is yet to be seen, but we are very much hopeful that these 12% uh, uh, people will finish within this asar. And then remaining around 5 to 7% um, uh, remaining household we made agreement. Uh, there are certain people actually who may not have to construct their house anyway, but the, because they, they have some different problem. They may have land issue. They may have uh, other different type of issues. And then uh, there are some people who are vulnerable. Vulnerable people, um, uh, physically handicapped people are there. Uh, for them, we have made a special arrangement. Uh, all uh, our partner licenses are familiar with that. And um, we are um, now, we have recruited the um, uh, uh, human resources to support them. Social mobilizers and then also uh, masons we have um, uh, recruited already and they are in, they were in the field before this um, lockdown and you know, as soon as possible as soon as this lockdown opens up they will be again be in the field and then they will be supporting to the vulnerable people so meaning that we will be arrive, approaching 90 percent very soon and then uh, remaining people uh, there could be still i mean uh, some uh, who, who, who may not be able to construct or I mean they may not need to construct. So uh, it means I mean we are almost then done uh, uh, in terms of how sector. Next. And uh, vulnerable settlements uh, as you most of you are familiar with we have also worked in terms of vulnerable settlements. Uh, with uh, 
undertaking. I mean, for NRA, the agreements handling was very, very big challenge, actually. I mean, we had to sort out 600,000 uh, uh, plus um, grievances. And uh, the good message from our side is um, almost all uh, the, those grievances have been uh, sorted them out. And only 5,000 cases are um, remaining because uh, for those 5,000 cases, we don't have enough uh, enough uh, evidences. That's why we are really considering right now whether to send them back to the um, field level or we declare them as non-beneficiaries, but they will have opportunity to go back to the appellate committee so that um, they can they can uh, lose their complaint and then uh, get appropriate justice. And for appellate committee is also quite active now. They have already settled 1,520 cases and then um, and then others are in process. And next. Next, yeah. Uh, in terms of other sectors as well, I mean, we are making um, quite good progress in terms of school building, uh, significant 74%, I mean, uh, achievement in health facilities, 56%. Heritage Monument, it is, uh, as you all know that heritage, making progress in heritage sector is quite difficult. Uh, but it's still that, I mean, 44% we completed and 15% remaining. And uh, all remaining monuments we will definitely hand over to Department of Archaeology. They will take this forward. And in terms of old heritage side, 59% only completed and 32% uh, under com um, completion. It means, I mean, in old heritage side, almost we will finish within our timeline. Uh, in terms of government building also, we made very good progress with 84% completion, 40% means, I mean, we'll also be able to finish government buildings as well. Next. In terms of security building, 90% uh, completed. Uh, in terms of I mean, I NGO sector, the NGO sector, I would like to thank to all partner organizations uh, in this opportunity to thank all of you. You contributed a lot. And then uh, you were with us during this time of difficulties on behalf of government of Nepal as well as National Reconstruction Authority. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Uh, so uh, what happened actually with this INGO sector? Uh, 238 NGOs supported 300 projects uh, and then we worth 91 billion rupees. That is huge amount of money for which more than 79% already completed. And private housing, uh, 37 uh, INGOs, we provided our approval and for the construction of 3,000 plus houses, 77% completed. In terms of school building as well, um, 847 schools, 57% completed. Health posts, 38 INGOs uh, for 87 health facilities, 89% completed. And miscellaneous support, uh, there are other livelihood supports and uh, other miscellaneous type of support. Uh, for them, we gave uh, our approval to 160 NGOs and um, they are in various stages of uh, completion and most of them are about to complete. And most importantly, the issue which I would like to share with you today is um, this plan conference, international conference. Um, uh, we plan to organize 27 to 29 this uh, November 2020. Uh, the symposium, uh, we, it was necessary um, for us to postpone this uh, symposium. And when it will take place, we are still, I mean, uh, we don't know as, I mean, until how long this closure will uh, continue. That's why, I mean, it, uh, as soon as possible, I mean, immediately after 
uh, it opens up, we resume our office, then we'll organize something like um, some symposium, symposium or workshop, which we will let you know. And what are the progresses so far taking place? Uh, we received 100 plus abstracts of scientific papers, and all of them we have been reviewing right now. And then we have given deadline to all authors to, uh, to uh, submit by 17 May 2020. And uh, two volume of compendiums are ongoing. Our seven teams are working on this during this um, uh, lockdown as well. I, we have been making quite good progress in terms of compendium uh, preparation. In terms of institutional and district level papers, it, they are also progressing, although, although um, the, the progress has been slowed down. But uh, we are continuing on that. And we are going to announce pretty soon on, on a structured paper, whoever uh, has done uh, anything. I mean, we are going to call them uh, any publi uh, publication, uh, whatever has taken place, we will call them uh, and then we will publish that separately. Next. Next. Yeah. And uh, the issues what we have, you are all familiar with this, uh, with those issues. The timeline which we set earlier are no more valid. We have to set timeline again. Urban housing, it is, uh, it is, it continues to be complex and pro, uh, complex and problematic. Uh, we don't have clear, I mean, understand, I'm clear um, answer, solution for the urban housing. Until now, we, uh, in California Valley, we have made only 52% of the progress. So there will be still some caseload which needs to be um, uh, resolved. Similarly, we have retrofitting. Uh, this viability of urban, uh, how uh, to take forward retrofitting, although the the technical viability is there, but the real viability in urban sector is still to be answered. And heritage monument conservation, it is complex tradition of uh, traditional culture and politics, multiple stakeholders. There are also, I mean, there are a lot of issues. It is, uh, it is complicated because Department of Archaeology's uh, capacity to handle efficiently is also the issue. And this COVID-19 impact and this extension, how far it will go, and then financial resources, it will have implication on financial resources uh, that will be the constraint. Another is ensuring uh, and how NRA's lessons will be internalized by the generic line agencies, donors, and civil society is very big challenge uh, because this replication issue uh, becomes problem all the time. Next. Hello, next. Yeah. Uh, in terms of way forward, we have NRA uh, is going to be um, close our operation by 25 December. That is our mandate given by the uh, Act, 25 December. And preparation of uh, reconstruction action plan, uh, our end river, it, it, has, it is A2, uh, uh, our, our fruition is um, um, this reconstruction action plan, we have to, uh, uh, it is going on. And considering uh, remaining task uh, and impact of COVID-19, two ways, two options we have. Um, we have two options in front of us. One option is to close down by two, uh, 25th December 2020 and hand over to all activities, all generic agencies and NDRRMA is one option. Another X option uh, is to extend by nine months and then um, nine months that will allow us to complete all activities. We will have one full year to complete everything. And then uh, Hanover on 16 October, 2021, to close down to 16 October, 2021. That is another option we are considering. Next. Next, Rupaji. Okay, yeah. I would like to request all of you to uh, give us feedback on four areas. One is how can NRA be further effective in a private housing sector, particularly for mitigating COVID-19 impacts? That is one question I would like to, would like to get in, uh, feedback from you. And how should we handle ICNR, International Conference? And then third is how do you think are the priority areas for us? And how to ensure sustainability of NRA initiatives? Those four questions actually, if you can, it is what is possible, I would appreciate if you can uh, give uh, your feedback. Having said that, I end my presentation here, and I would like to request Manorji uh, okay. if there is anything. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra, for your uh, exclusive presentation. Um, yeah. Now, uh, 
uh, if uh, Manohar Gimire, sir, if you have anything to add on to Dr. Chandra's presentation, uh, I would like to give uh, uh, two minutes floor to you. Uh, uh, thank Manohar, you. Sir. Thank you, Rupal ji. I think all things are already captured by our respected Chandra sir. So no need to say uh, again those things. Uh, so I hand over this uh, mic to you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Manohar sir. So now um, moving forward, uh, we have a very uh, important uh, session now, which is a question answer session. And this is uh, uh, 15 minutes. And uh, then final five minutes will be wrap up and uh, closing uh, by uh, again, Dr. Chandra. So the floor is open. And uh, please, uh, if you want to um, uh, share anything or if you have questions, uh, you can either uh, uh, unmute and then start speaking or you can uh, uh, drop a question in the chat box and I'm also monitoring the chat box. Okay, uh, the floor is open uh, for, let me see if I can see any questions or. Uh, Uttamji, uh, do we have any questions uh, in the chat boxes? Milan okay, okay, is busy, uh, but we okay. are. Uh, let's give some time for participants yeah. to think about their questions so that we can we can have them and answer them. Okay, so I think I heard uh, Milan Mukia from CRS. So the floor is yours, uh, um, Milan Mukia. Uh, namaste, Sandra sir. Uh, it was very good presentation indeed. Um, time flies, and it's been five years since we had mega earthquake in 2015. And uh, we are really grateful to the Nepal government, especially NRA for addressing the needs of earthquake affected families in reconstruction process. Not only private housing sector that I would like to emphasize, but equally NRA supported livelihood and wash sector for which people had income from the livelihood and they complemented their uh, shelter part. So that was a very good example, Nepal indeed. So my uh, question actually, when you talk about the priority, also I prefer that the NRA should have also given some priority to the IDPs. So there are some places still, for example, in Raswa, people are living in the makeshift camps. Do you have any you know, update status? And then the future plan, is there any for, especially the IDPs who have been still living um, scattered around the uh, country, especially like I'm also honoring the uh, case of Rasua. There are uh, around 400 um, people who displaced from the mountain villages toward the lower belt of Rasua, still living in the makeshift camps. Thank you very yeah. much, sir. Yes, sure. Okay, I can see some questions over here. Tasi Lama, so could you uh, please uh, go ahead with your question, Tasi? Floor is to you. Tasi, uh, you can unmute Hello. and uh, uh, take the mic. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. perfect. Hello. Thank you. So this is Tashi Lama from Halambu. And uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, thanks to all for arranging this uh, wonderful uh, platform. And thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, so I can, I can get like so many, uh, uh, I can see so many achievements. Uh, at the same time, I'm wondering about the like, uh, uh, you know, reconstruction of uh, cultural heritages in Himalayan communities. Like, uh, uh, I'm wondering about the like situation of reconstruction of community building having the cultural value, which can make like very, you know, strong, significant for the like um, tourism development and so on. So like, I'm wondering about about the you know, monasteries in Buddhist community of Nepal. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I think uh, I can see there another in the chat box, uh, Persantas Resta. Uh, is that your question or just a statement? Uh, could you uh, please unmute your mic and uh, take the floor? 
Hi, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am Prasartha from, uh, I, I worked for uh, Rural Development Tukia Association. And okay. uh, uh, so uh, it is a great opportunity to share uh, something. Uh, so thank you for uh, organizing this uh, uh, meeting. And uh, what uh, my, uh, I, have, uh, so I have put my solution in the chat box also. Uh, that was uh, uh, the time period, the timeline, it will be good. Uh, to extend the uh, timeline for uh, nine months. Uh, that's why uh, all other uh, households who are under construction, it will be very uh, good, it will be very easy to uh, completion in quality quality level. And uh, next, my uh, uh, curious is uh, what uh, what is the, the NRA's uh, clear decision about uh, the dual ownership of uh, house? For uh, retrofitting, and uh, uh, some uh, people are saying that uh, they are facing some problems uh, and uh, confusion that uh, due to uh, no clear uh, guidance and the decision of uh, NRA, then uh, the families are in uh, con confusion whether uh, they have uh, whether they get uh, installment uh, for uh, dual ownership of a retrofitting house or not, and uh, uh, the other is uh, uh, schools uh, about the school con construction also. What is the clear uh, policy about uh, uh, the school construction as well? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prasanta. And uh, uh, I am Purusartha, not Prasanta. Oh, sorry, Purusartha. Okay, I yes. beg your pardon. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't. I I'm seeing here. Um, I hope uh, uh, Dr. Chandra will be uh, will get some time to address all these questions. But I would like to request all the participants to give uh, some kind of solutions also how we how to move forward with this COVID-19 situation and yeah. um, uh, the viability for international conference on uh, Nepal's reconstruction and what should be the priority areas for NRA in this last final year. Uh, so please uh, suggest uh, uh, to uh, this uh, floor. Um, I, I can see this uh, uh, OPPO. Uh, I don't know whose name is this, but um, why mandatory rule of thumb is applied discarding the owner-driven model? Um, I don't know who wrote this, but uh, if you could voluntarily explain uh, this, uh, it would be so much grateful. And okay, um, I would also like to give floor to Rupesh Resta. Um, if you have uh, something to share, uh, seeing current scenario due to mobility issues, international conference should encourage uh, Zoom presentations, information technology. So Rupesh uh, Resta, uh, the you can unmute and uh, uh, take the floor. Uh, hello, everybody. It's just a suggestion um, that uh, seeing this scenario, uh, maybe uh, we have to also accommodate Zoom presentation in conference. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, uh, just a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then um, 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 I think um, let me stop here for the participants to question or share the suggestion, but I would like to give uh, floor to again, Dr. Chandra to, you know, respond uh, to those questions. Uh, okay. Dr. Chandra, floor is to you. Thank you very much. Uh, this Miller, um, Milan Mukia, this uh, my main question, future plan, and then um, he was talking about IDP, particularly IDPs, particularly of Russia. Uh, actually, um, if you, uh, are mentioning the case of Khalte of Rasua, uh, which we are aware of. Uh, we are going to, we are in the process of resolving that problem. We are going to buy land for them. And then uh, we are going to develop, I mean, house uh, also for them. So that, I mean, the, the issue will be resolved. I don't any other, I mean, IDP uh, case. We are not entering into IDP case directly, actually. We are going through our intervention through housing uh, intervention. And then if there are any cases of vulnerabilities, we are um, supporting them 
for developing settlements and also constructing houses, infrastructure, everything. So with that intervention, I think your uh, issue will be resolved. I'm, I'm very much sure that this uh, Braswa's case won't be there. We will resolve before our um, termination. Uh, second thing is Tasiji's uh, question in terms of uh, monasteries. Uh, in terms of monastery, there was some budgetary problem actually. The monastery uh, was uh, under the uh, government of India's, I mean, funding uh, portfolio. Because of that issue, uh, it took some time, and then we wanted to change from uh, um, Exim Bank's, I mean, portfolio to government of Nepal's portfolio. Uh, now we are working with that that is taking why rehabilitation re restoration of uh, monastery is taking a long time uh, but i think we are we are we are trying our best to uh, resolve it and then hopefully it will be resolved if we could not finish this within our um, our um, tenure our uh, nra's lifetime uh, then i will make appropriate arrangement for that we will not really remain i mean leave things uh, irresponsibly. We will take, make, we will make a special arrangement uh, for the reconstruction of these monasteries. We are very, very much appreciative. We really know the importance of, I mean, Gumbas and their monasteries. So uh, there is no point, I mean, that we will resolve this. Uh, this, this was only budgetary issues. And um, uh, Purusharthaji's uh, issue of, of uh, timeline extension, nine months, I thank you very much for that. Um, uh, I will communicate this message. I mean, just for all of you, I will communicate today's message to tomorrow. There is another uh, webinar which will be uh, shared by our CEO. And then all uh, donor, donor agencies will also participate. All government agencies will also participate. We organized uh, today's, I mean, this program because because we wanted to listen um, from the partner organization and then allowing you give you appropriate time. That was the reason why we organized this today. Otherwise, we also wanted to organize this meeting tomorrow. Uh, so it is the message what you communicated about the timeline. I will uh, communicate tomorrow to the uh, uh, audience. I mean, uh, policymakers. And uh, next issue of retrofitting. Uh, in terms of retrofitting, we have clear guidance from our guidelines from our side. There is no ambiguity. We have not le uh, leave any uh, ambiguity left. Uh, if somebody would like to const reconstruct house, uh, re uh, would like to change from retrofitting to um, full, I mean, uh, reconstruction of house, that is also possible. Uh, we we can uh, we can fund them. We can finance them according to the full beneficiary arrangement. Uh, and if they would like to go ahead with retrofitting, they can go ahead with retrofitting. There is no confusion actually from our policymaking side, but um, by, there could be some issue of communication. If you can ask, uh, you ask them, the people who have uh, a confusion directly to us, we can find a way out for them. Uh, I could not get a, a school, your uh, issue of school, which I will, uh, we can talk later. Uh, Rupesi's, I mean, uh, suggestion uh, in terms of, of uh, using Zoom for international conference, uh, I don't know how far it will be possible. Um, let us see, I mean, uh, after resuming, um, uh, when life gets normal after, after this lockdown, well, our, uh, our steering committee, our organizing committee, as well as secretariat, mm -hmm. will discuss this issue very much carefully, and then we'll come back to you um, um, uh, to, uh, we'll come back to you. We'll announce this uh, to all of you. Thank you very much. Good. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra. Um, now, uh, we have very limited time. Um, actually, this is a great number of participation. We have 84 participants participating in this webinar. And uh, uh, I would like to take last uh, few, one or two questions. Uh, before we come to the uh, uh, closing um, uh, session. So again, uh, if anyone, uh, I'm monitoring the chat box, uh, but uh, I don't know if there are, okay. Um, there is one question over here. Um, Minar Thapa Mogar, uh, if, uh, yeah, uh, can you take um, mic and uh, um, for floor is open, Minar. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Rupaji. Uh, thank you, Chandrasar, for a uh, wonderful presentation. So my question is, like, 
uh, as you said, uh, NRA is planning to um, uh, end uh, in December 2020. And if NRA is not going to continue beyond December 2020, uh, who will be, uh, who and how uh, the re remaining reconstruction uh, work is going to be carried forward? What are your suggestions for all those partner organizations who want to support in um, urban reconstruction process, supporting uh, the vulnerable households who uh, still need to rebuild? Uh, and if they have multi a year project that continues beyond 2020. Uh, thank you, Rupal. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Minarji. Uh, Dr. Chandra, would you like to yeah. say, uh, respond this uh, question? Sure, of course. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, if uh, the our steering committee there decides to close this town by December 2020, then we'll. Uh, we will uh, prompt, I mean, we will move to our swiftly for preparing exit strategy. And then exit strategy will tell that, I mean, what is the condition of which project and how to handle that, I mean, project effectively. There has to be seamless arrangement, I mean, between uh, uh, during the existence of uh, NRA and then non existence of NRA. That's why we will make arrangement and then, I mean, um, we will announce it and we will interact with all of you, with all partner organizations, with all, all government organizations. So there won't be any confusion. That the confusion, I mean, we won't leave any confusion behind. And if somebody would like to support in urban reconstruction, I mean, uh, we have been requesting to everybody, uh, I mean, how to support urban reconstruction. There won't be any problem. Uh, if there is any particular interest for supporting urban reconstruction, uh, uh, we, we will be handing over this uh, housing to the appropriate generic line agencies with appropriate responsibilities so that we can make arrangement with the, similarly the vulnerable case as well. And uh, if somebody has multi-year project and then if they, uh, or they won't finish within this 2020 December, no worries, we will make also arrangement for them and then we will designate, I mean, who will be their um, uh, um, counterpart agency from the side of government of Nepal that we, management we will make. I mean, no worries actually. Uh, uh, no partner organization, uh, I would like suggest to worry uh, about those issues. We will make uh, arrangements so that the implementation becomes uh, interrupted and then seamless. It continues seamlessly. So uh, there, there is no, I mean, problem there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra. Um, uh, we have now only two minutes uh, left uh, uh, for this webinar, but before uh, giving closing uh, 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 as closing as Max did to Dr. Chandra, um, uh, it was a wonderful webinar se uh, session uh, with participation of 86 participants. And uh, we would like to have uh, this kind of constructive feedback um, when the country is now going through this COVID-19 uh, global health pandemic, and also uh, how creatively we can organize this uh, international conference uh, in the November period. So um, I would like to really thank uh, Dr. Chandra and uh, Manohar sir from NRA who made this possible. And also I would like to thank all the participants who actively participated. And uh, we will have this uh, recording of this webinar uh, which will which we will share this link through our HRP bulletin, which is being published tomorrow. So now I would like to hand over again the final closing remarks to uh, uh, Dr. Chandra. You have a uh, uh, closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rublazi. Once again, thank you very much, uh, HRRP, for organizing this. Uh, I mean, the time is very short. What I will do is I will capture the messages what you have given to us. Uh, to tomorrow's webinar, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, and then um, it it is going to be very very much I mean helpful supporting uh, arguments to us uh, for tomorrow's uh, webinar as well. If you uh, do not find time to communicate something, please write uh, to me or SRRP so that I mean I can take your messages to uh, tomorrow's webinar. That is one I mean uh, request I would like to make. Just feel free to give, give all uh, responses against our four questions.
uh, that will really, really help. And once again, I would like to thank all of you. Uh, this last five years time was not very easy. It was extremely turbulent. Given the political situation, given the social situation, expectations from the beneficiaries, all I mean became extremely complicated, extremely turbulent type of I mean time. And during that the difficult time, you all uh, supported us, and then that we are we are really grateful to all of you. And then we would like to uh, get uh, receive similar type type of support from your um, from your side uh, in the during the time to come. Thank you very much. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, it was uh, wonderful having you all here. Uh, so we'll end this webinar here today. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted through our HRP bulletins. If not, uh, the, the address is www.hrpnepal.org. Please do subscribe to our bulletins and then we'll keep, uh, share the PowerPoint as well as the recording of this uh, webinar today through that uh, bulletin. So thank you all. We'll be ending this meeting here. Uh, it was wonderful having you. Thank you.